I do that, I want to talk about one thing that I noticed when I was um, kind of milling through the grading for last week and the week before, or actually the first week and this week. And that is a couple of you guys are um, missing points because of not naming your files properly. And I have a folder over here that kind of goes through how you should be setting up your files to submit these lesson files. And for the most part, most of you did a great job, but it's very important that you follow the naming conventions uh, located in the assignment. And what do I mean by that? If you go back to coursework and into assignments and lectures into week two and scroll down to the assignment, which in this case, it's the uh, lessons three and six. That's what I'm talking about here, how to submit, list, how to submit lesson files for um, work you're doing through the text and it says here that you need to take those files put them into a folder with your last name it says that right here label the lessons that you're working on for that particular week and um, <clears throat> once that folder is labeled then you proceed to follow the instructions below here for zipping up that folder and then submitting it to me however what's happening is and I'm not sure where it's happening but um, when I get your files and unzip them, so in other words, this example right here is someone who did it incorrectly. So when I get this zip file right here, it says King, which is his last name, underscore lesson four. Everything seems A-OK. -okay. However, when I double click this zip file, I get a folder that says lesson four. Okay, And since when I unzip this file, it's in a gigantic folder of you know, 60 other students, and I get a folder called Lesson 4, I have no idea who that Lesson 4 folder belongs to. Hence, I can't give you credit for your work unless I spend five minutes trying to figure out what file unzipped and gave me a Lesson 4 folder. So what you need to do, and this is critical, is before you create your zip files, you need to make sure that your folders that you're putting all your lessons in read your last name underscore and whatever lesson you're working on. Okay, that's critical. And then once you've made sure that everything's named properly, then you zip your file and chances are when I unzip on my end, it'll come out with your last name underscore lesson four. Okay, so some of you got doc points for that because I don't accept any files that are not labeled properly. So um, you'll need to get on board whoever got docked points on that and get your files labeled properly. We had a question about that. So make sure that before you create your zip file that you name your files properly with your last name underscore whatever lesson you're working on. That's the critical thing. Okay? All right. I just wanted to cover that before I delve into uh, the pro progress reports. Composite going on over here and I have some images. Okay? So um, that's kind of what you're doing. You're compiling based on this assignment. So going back to here, this assignment, uh, you're expected to go out and research and find a series of images, at least five to ten. The more images you have for this project, the more um, creative you can get. So you're looking for at least five to ten images. Last week we talked about how to go out and find those how to um, be mindful of resolution. Today I'm going to talk more about resolution and how that will impact the quality of your final project. Okay. Alright, so back here, this is kind of a semi-composite. I've got a couple of images. If you look over here in my layers panel, I have um, one layer named leaves, which is this kind of fuzzy area up through the top here. If I um, turn off the background, that's the leaves layer. And then if I turn off that layer and turn this on, I've got a image here with, with some water and some waterfalls and some trees. Okay, so I'm preparing, beginning to prepare my composite design. Okay, and this is kind of like some fantasy or whatever that I'm thinking about doing. And whatever it is you're doing in here should be related to the sketch work you did last week. Because this is a progress report, you're each week giving me... A, a report on how you're working through this problem. So this is just an example that I'm showing you today of, you know, 
a particular student who had solved the problem in the past. So I'm using their files for this uh, demonstration. Okay, I also over here have a couple of images that I want to bring into this main file. Okay, now before we go any further and talk about all of that, I want to talk about how you should begin and start your project. Okay, so you should have Photoshop launched and you'll go up to the file menu here and you'll pull down to the new to create a new document in Photoshop. So basically what I'm going to go through here is what everybody should be using to set up their file. And where am I getting this information? Well back here again to the assignment handout it tells you some information about your project. For instance number three here it says uh, the project needs to be 8 half by 11 and it needs to be 150 dpi which is the resolution of the project okay so going back here to Photoshop this is uh, a new window which is going to create a brand new Photoshop document so in this window here you're going to want to uh, pull down to US letter alright because US letter is indeed 8 half by 11 now you have a couple decisions to make here at this point. Um, de depending on your sketch work from last week and what you're planning to do with this digital map painting, you can either make it a portrait um, design, which is 8 half by 11, as you see here, or you can make it a landscape design, which would uh, reverse these dimensions to something like this, where your width would be 11 and your height would be 8 half. And in this case back here, this example back here is indeed a landscape um, rendition of a digital map painting where the uh, height direction is 8 half and the width is 11. So we're talking about from here to here being 11 and from here to here being 8 and half. Okay? Okay, so now that that's input, the next thing we not need to be concerned about, and back to our project handout where I was talking about the criteria for the project, you need to put in a, a resolution for this particular file. So uh, stated here on the assignment handout, you're, you're to work with an 150 DPI file. So we're going to go back here to Photoshop, and in resolution field, we're going to put 150. Okay. Now the rest of this you can kind of leave the default, like for instance the color mode, we're going to stick with RGB, we're going to leave the contents of the background as white, and again this background can always be changed, it could be removed, it could be deleted and be transparent, um, so you're not set in stone here, it's a lot of these settings can change, but you are, well I shouldn't say that, you can't really uh, change this setting you could change this setting, but this setting should stay the same, uh, and you can change the mode setting. So some of these are, are changeable, uh, others I wouldn't recommend, like for instance the resolution setting. You should know up front what resolution you're working with and then keep it at that resolution for the entire duration of the project. Okay? But some of these others you can change once you go ahead and OK this. Uh, under advanced, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as the default color profile because we're really not going to be wor uh, working with color profiles since this is an online class you guys are pretty lucky you don't actually have to go out and get physical prints uh, when I teach this class face to face the students are required to go out and get physical prints and then these color files come into play but for you uh, we're not going to worry too much about this so we're going to go ahead and say OK and back here you can kind of see if I um, hit command minus, that's what I just hit to kind of fit that to the window there, you can see I have a blank white page in Photoshop right here. Okay, and my composite, the one we're going to use for demonstration, is here. So everybody is going to need to start uh, their setup of their file just as I showed you there. So that's pretty cr critical information because when you turn these into me, um, I am going to be checking to make sure that you've set up your files properly. Okay, so let's move on. 
And it's kind of funny because when I'm lecturing this in um, face to face, I always go, is there any questions? But since you guys are not physically there, I can't ask you if there's any questions. So you'll just have to post your questions in the problems and solutions area for week three, if you have it. Okay, so back to here. All right, so that was the document set up for your digital map painting. So I have this demonstration here set up, and I have some images over here. Uh, on, the, on the left, I've got a, a, a semi-composite. On the right, I have a couple of images that I found on the Internet that I'm going to um, use for this composite. And you may have a series of images as well. Now, the, um, the goal here with this project is that you're going to use a series of images and you're going to combine them into a particular fantasy scene. Okay, and I showed you some of those examples last time. And uh, I have so many more examples, but they're all in print. And um, if you come to open lab hours on Thursdays to see me in person, I could show you many more examples than I've shown you here in these lectures. I just try to cut these lectures down to short, so I can't spend a lot of time showing lots of examples. Okay. Um, I might post a couple, a little gallery, if I have some time to put it together, but I don't know. This, this semester has been kind of busy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work on these two butterfly images over here. Okay, so when you have a series of images that you need to kind of composite into one particular master file, what we're going to do is call this on the left, this file right here that I'm sort of circling, we're going to call this the master file. So this is kind of like the final file that we're creating here um, of our digital map painting. We're going to call that the master file. So over here we've got these files, uh, butterflies, that we want to bring into the master file. Okay, So there's a couple of things we're going to need to do before we do that. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check here a couple of things. First I want to show you some information about my master file. So to find out information about a particular file in Photoshop, you go under Image and you pull down to Image Size. Okay, So looking at the information about this, this master file over here, notice I have my 8.5 by 11 in here, which is um, indeed what you have in yours if you've set up your file properly. And I have a resolution of 150. And it's telling me the pixels uh, width and height of this particular file. This is the inches over here, and this is the pixels. So this gives me a little bit of information about my file. I can also find out that same information about this master file if I come down here where I'm circling and hold down the Option key and click this field down below here. And I also get the same information. I get the width and height in pixels and in inches. I also get uh, my channel information and I get my resolution. So it's just two locations inside your Photoshop file that you can find out information about the file itself. So it's either up here under image size or you can come down here and hold down the option key and click and you'll get the same information. Okay, okay so back over here let's find out some information about these two files and I'm going to use the second method of finding information it's just easier so I'm going to hold down the option key and click and I'm going to find out some information about this butterfly file so right now the butterfly file is um, 5410 by 4032 pixels and it's 22 by 16 in size so it's pretty big and the resolution is 240 hmm there's a problem. The resolution is not the same resolution as my master file. Okay, so I'm going to make a note that this file needs to be um, edited somewhat. Let's check out this one down here. Hold down the Option key and click. And this file over here is 640 by 613, 8 by 10, 72 pixels per inch. Hmm, another problem. So we've got two images here that are two different resolutions and neither one of those resolutions are what we need for our master file which is 150. So what do we do? Okay, Well there's a technique that we can use to um, get all these images to the right resolution before we start compositing them in our master file. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to work on this one first up here. 
So the first thing we do is, um, we were just in here a moment ago, we go up to image and we go to image size. We were just in there just a few minutes ago when we were looking at our master file and we get that information about the file. Okay, Tells us it's 22 by 16 and it's a 240 uh, DPI image. All right. Now there's a setting down here that for most of you might be turned on and it might look something like this. Okay, when you first come in here. I happen to have mine turned off because I know what I'm about to do here. Uh, so, but when you first come in here, you will probably see these three check marks turned on. Okay, what you're going to need to do is turn those check marks off. Okay, before you get ready to do what you're about to do here. Okay, now I want you to watch when I go ahead and make this change. I want you to watch the width and height of this image. Okay, watch the dimensions here. Okay, making sure these are all turned off, I'm going to put 150 in here. Now, did everybody notice what happened here at the width and the height? Suddenly, when I put 150 in here, it enlarged the image to 26 by 36. And the reason for that is because um, the resolution that was once in here was high, or higher than what we needed, okay? So by turning these off, what we did is we actually um, stopped from resampling and putting in this information allowed us to um, give it the proper resolution, which because it was larger originally, now it is physically a larger image because the resolution has dropped. So you kind of have to compensate in one place or another. You either have to compensate in the size of the image or the resolution. So in essence, let's go through that again. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. All right, so here is my image. We go up here and we go to image size. And at the image size area, we have found out that our file indeed is the wrong resolution. So we make sure that all of these settings are turned off. You might see something like this when you first come in. You make sure these are all turned off by just hitting this one and it'll turn all of them off and you put in 150 in here and it will change the size of the image because you're uh, resing in essence you're resing it down so the image will enlarge just by nature of the fact that you're decreasing the resolution okay so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and we won't notice anything change over here because basically um, what you have done is you've given it the same um, information. So there's really no change. At 150, if you want to retain the same amount of information, it has to enlarge the image to 26 by 36 versus 240 at a very at a smaller size. Okay? Okay. So now that we have um, modified this image. We're going to come down and we're going to work with this image down here. Now, this is going to give us an example of the opposite situation. Okay, so let's come into this image and go image size. And in this case, we have um, a 72 DPI image. Okay, and the size of this image is 8 by 8, roughly. Okay, making sure and a lot of times you're going to come in here first off and these are all going to be turned on. You want to turn them off. Okay. Now watch what happens to the width and height of this image when I change it because in this particular case you have less resolution than what you need. But you actually have a decent size image. So when you put 150 in here it changes the size of the image to a smaller size because you actually have less pixels to work with. So it tries to compensate and make it equivalent. So instead of an 8x8 eight eight image, when you put 150 in there, you now are working with a 4x4 four four image. Okay, So it's basically resing down the image to uh, appropriately to match the 150 uh, DPI resolution without you losing any image quality. So both of these examples, we changed the resolution, but we did not lose image quality in either example. Okay, in the first example, we increased or we decreased the resolution because we had more than what we needed and it compensated by enlarging the image. In this particular example, we didn't have enough resolution, so we added resolution and it made the actual physical image smaller. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and say okay. So now 
we've got our two images that have, if I come over here with my option key again, now this image is at 150, and this image over here is also at 150, and my master file is at 150. So now we have all of our images that we're going to work with at 150. And just by doing a little bit of resing up and down, we were able to, you know, work with that and make it um, without losing any image quality. And that's the most important thing. Uh, when you're working in Photoshop, one thing you want to keep in mind is um, anytime you do any types of um, enlargement or reduction, um, it will tamper with the quality of the image. And we'll get into a little more of that in a minute here. So it's important to just remember that. So it's generally okay to reduce an image in Photoshop. Uh, chances are you'll actually increase the quality. But anytime you enlarge an image in Photoshop, you enlarge the pixels and you decrease the quality. And what could possibly happen is you end up with something like you know, a, a blurry image or an image that shows the actual physical image pixel and it, it just looks low resolution. And since we're online, it's kind of hard to show you prints with the, that nature. But if, if I just zoom in here on this one real quick, um, let me just get the zoomer here and zoom up on something like this. And... Um, maybe you've seen a situation where printouts um, from Photoshop images had this kind of quality where there was a bunch of pixels really large and the detail was lost. That's generally what happens when you open an image in Photoshop and, and scale it up to something like 700 to 750 percent and you lose image quality and you chances are you end up with a situation like this. Okay. All right. So let me get this back into space here. Okay. All right. So now we've got all of these images ready to start compositing. But there's one other thing we need to do. And uh, you just finished this lesson. Um, it was, let's see what lesson, lesson three, where you learned about different selection techniques. That's what we're going to work with here to. Um, drop out the backgrounds of these butterfly images. All right, so now that we've got the resolution set properly, we're now, we're now going to drop out the backgrounds because once we bring these images, for instance, if I didn't do what I just said I was going to do, and I just brought this image over here, okay, I am clicked on this butterfly, butterfly image here. If I just brought this image into my master file over here, and let me go ahead. It's it's a really big image, so I'm going to size it down here. Okay. Okay. Now, if I didn't um, drop out this white background and I brought this image into my master file, this is what I would get. I would get the white background with the butterfly, and I would say to myself, well, that's not what I wanted. I want this butterfly to kind of be seamlessly transparent back here in the white areas and sit on top of this, um, you know, waterfall or these trees or what have you, okay? So you're going to have to use a selection and you're going to have to drop out that background, okay? So we're going to go ahead and remove, okay? I want to go ahead and don't apply this and we're going to take that out of there and go back to here, okay? our file back. Okay, so now what we're going to do over here is we're going to drop out this white background using some selection tools. Okay, all right, so I myself am a sort of a, an antiquated uh, Photoshop user, and I realize you guys are working in Photoshop 6, but I've been working with Photoshop since version 1, and some of the classic tools that um, they've had in the program for years are probably my favorites. And some of these new highfalutin tools that they've come out with that are supposedly supposed to do all this really great stuff are really no different than some of the classic tools that I've been using for years. So a lot of my demonstrations are going to involve using some of, more or less a lot of the classic tools. You can find out about all the new tools by looking on uh, pages 
39 through um, 42 in your book, and it talks about a lot of different selection tools and such. I'm just privy to using some of the classics because they just work for me, and so that's what most of my demos include. So over here, I'm going to use a classic tool that's been around in Photoshop for just about uh, more than a decade, and that's called the, um, the quick selection tool here, if you hover the magic wand. Okay. You also have the quick selection tool, but I prefer, uh, I'm sorry, I said the quick selection tool. I prefer the actual magic wand, which is actually a, an original tool from, you know, the early days of Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and click on my white background. And notice that using that tool with a setting tolerance of 32 has gone ahead and selected everything that's white on this file, which is great. Okay, but there's a couple of issues I need to deal with here. So um, my second favorite classic tool is this area over here called the um, Quick Mask. Okay, that's right here. You click here. What that does is it shows you what you have selected in red. So looking at this over here, you can kind of see if I turn that off, you see the selection is selecting around here. But if you actually want to see what you have selected, you can turn on your quick mouse and you can sort of see. And I have some issues here. Um, that I need to deal with. Uh, the first one is um, in order to actually do anything with this image I have to um, convert the background to a um, editable layer. So I forgot to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It, it deselected which I can go ahead and add my my selection back on here. So um, I double click this layer over here. Okay, Let me do that again if you didn't see that. Okay, so we're going to go back up here and to our history panel. Okay, so over here I've got this background and right now it's locked. I double click it and I can unlock it. Now I can start working on dropping out that white area. Okay, I should have done that before I got this tool, but I forgot. So be it happens. Okay, so back over here to the magic wand selection. Let's go ahead and click. All right, so I've got that selection back. Okay, I have some issues though. If I were to go ahead and say delete right now, notice that I still have this area down here, but I want to delete that area. I don't want that to end up on my background. Otherwise, it's going to come over here in my master file. So if I Command Z, which is undo what I just did, and turn on my quick selection, I can actually zoom up. So I'm going to grab the zoomer tool here. And I'm going to zoom up on this area. Okay, hold up, hold down the space bar to pan around here. And I'm going to see that this indeed is selected. Okay, but I want to remove it from the selection. So in order to do that, I can use my pencil tool over here. I'll click on my pencil, make sure I have a, a large enough pencil nib here. All right. And Make sure that, let's see, where am I? Yeah. Okay, make sure that over here in your swatches you have the white swatch showing. Okay, and you can switch those swatches by clicking this arrow here. Make sure you have the white swatch showing. And with that white swatch showing, that allows you to erase away some of that mask. So you see what I just did there? So right now, this red is showing me that um, I have a mask on that area and I want to erase that away. So making sure I have a white swatch set here, I can go ahead and erase away that mask. Okay. So now if I put myself double clicking the hand and command minus down to size so that I can sort of see here, put myself back into um, the selection mode, notice now I no longer have a selection around that area. So if I hit delete, that area will be removed. Okay. All right. So I had to do a little bit of uh, correction there. All right. So it looks, it's looking pretty good. It's looking like I've got everything um, in the selection that I need. And if I hit delete, it removes that background for me. Okay. And command D will deselect the image. Okay. So now 
that this image is sitting on this checkerboard background, which indicates it's transparent, if I try what I tried earlier, bringing this image in, so do a select all on this and bring this image into here, okay, you can kind of already see that your selection is coming in properly. Okay, so Command T for uh, transform, so we can size this down. Holding down the Shift key here to constrain proportions and sizing this butterfly back down to a manageable size without the white background. Okay, so now I can start compositing. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about something I noticed when, okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply this and zoom up on this just slightly here. And you, um, when I'm looking at this up close, I'm noticing here that I have a, a kind of like a row of white pixels here that is coming over from this image that I would like to eliminate. Not as bad over here, but I don't like it over here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this into view again, Command minus to get it into view. And I'm going to use what they call the history panel over here. This is something that's in your book where you can actually look through a series of um, steps that you just went through and you can remove them. So we're going to go back to original, which I just removed those steps of bringing this image in. And I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. I'm going to remove some of the steps here that um, I use to um, bring the, to cut out this mask up to about here. I don't want to go to here because that brings all this back. So I'm going to go to about right here. Actually, I am going to go back to this. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go back to here where I was when I had a white background. And I'm going to use something to help eliminate some of that white edge that ended up showing up over here. I'm going to come in here and go to um, modify. And let's see. I'm going to. No, I'm going to contract. Let's see, I think I'm going to contract. Let me try this first. Two pixels. Okay. And then let me delete this and bring this over. Let's see if that looks better. No, that went the opposite way. So let me go back. Come back over here. Okay. And yeah, we're back to back to here we're back to here okay so instead of doing um, contract I'm going to do expand and I'm going to make this two pixels okay and then I'm going to delete all right and then I'm going to bring this back over here select all whoops That's, uh, command D to deselect and then select all and we'll bring this over come on What's going on here? Let me, let me, there we go. Now that may not be enough, but it's getting smaller. We may have to um, okay, let me undo that. So again, we're going back to the original. And I'm just working through this and trying to, um, I'm trying to cut in to this image is what I'm trying to do here. All right, so I'm going to go back here and turn this on. And this time I'm going to actually zoom up so I can see the edge here, so I can see what's happening. Okay. And let's see, we'll take off the expand and contract and we'll go all the way back to here. So this is just the original selection here. And I'm going to come in here and I thought it was expands. So let's let's do severely. Okay, it looks like that's what I should have done. I don't know if you noticed that, but I just didn't go enough is what happened. Is um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make this selection cut in 
and into this image and eliminate a little white row of pixels that ends up showing up when I composite these. So if I go select, expand, and watch this edge right here and go four, looks like, we'll go five just to be sure. See how it cuts in and eliminates you know, a row of pixels there? Now, when I say delete, okay, okay, and I de command D to deselect and then command A to select the whole thing because I'm actually going to try and bring this entire thing in, see, over here. And I have to go back to the selection tool and drag this into here. Okay, now, now looking at this, you see how I've eliminated that that white edge and it's starting to look a lot better when it's compositing here, you see? And you know, you may want to go in there and do a little bit more of that. It's looking pretty good here. Yeah, not bad. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. What I'm trying to do is make, I'm trying to refine the edge of this selection. So over here in my main master document, I'm going to go ahead and Command T and Command minus. Right. So I'm over here in my master document, Command T. Um, oops, sorry. I have to be selected on the right layer here. Don't and select on the right layer, Command T. And in order to see the size of this thing, you actually have to uh, size your file down. Holding down the Shift key to constraint proportions, we could now size this into um, a usable size. Okay. Again, as I said before, reducing in Photoshop is generally okay in most cases. Command plus to show the window here. Holding down the shift key again to constraint proportions and what do I mean by that if you can kind of see how I'm pulling this edge here holding down the shift key it's uh, sizing this image both uh, if you look up here at the top you'll see the width and the height is sizing exactly the same 19.65 by 19.6 well close enough points uh, six so holding down the shift key allows that to happen. If I let go of the shift key, it, it lets me do this, and that's distorting the actual size of my image, and that's really not a desirable effect. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you hold down your shift key, notice it uh, snaps it back to uh, proportion. So letting go of the shift key allows you to distort it, which I don't recommend holding down the shift key. Uh, allows you to constraint proportions of your um, your area, your image that you're working with. Okay? If you let go and hit the return key, it go ahead, it goes ahead and um, applies that scaling. Okay, so now we can move this around. Okay, so now that we've done that, you're done with this image over here. We're going to go to this one now. And I'm going to quickly do this, and you can sort of watch me because I'm getting a little bit longer than I'd like to with this video. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to grab the magic wand tool, and I'm going to click and select my background. Just clicking on the white area, I'm going to check it in the quick mass as we did up here, pretty much doing all the same thing. I'm going to enlarge it slightly so that I can sort of see everything is in place. It's looking pretty good. I'm also, uh, before I go ahead and delete out the background here, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, um, you know, the quick mask first, okay? And I'm going to give it a modify expand of five so that it kind of cuts in. And that looks like a little too much for this size image, so I'm going to command Z that. I could also come over and use the history and go just back one if I wanted. And I'm going to uh, expand this, and this time I'm going to change that to 2. And that looks pretty good. Well, but we're losing our, our little antennas here. So let me go back, and let's go back, and I did a Command Z, and this time I'm going to just go 1. And we did lose our antennas as well, so that may not work for us on this particular image. I didn't want to lose those. Come on. 
lose those intent. Well, actually, it may not matter because we're not going to really see them when they come over here. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to add and expand on this one. And again, these techniques, you have to kind of look and see what you've got to work with. And I don't want to give up my antennas on this. So um, on this image, whoops, I forgot to, I think it's, yeah, it's not going to let me, um, I didn't, uh, hold on a second, I didn't unlock my background first. So let me, oh, and the other thing that is not allowing me to do, I can't unlock my background. This may happen to you as well. This image was downloaded off the internet and it's a GIF image. And a lot of times when you download a GIF image off the internet, it comes in as index color. And in order to work with that image, you first have to go up to um, the mode and change it to C, uh, RGB color instead of index color. All right. Then it'll let you unlock the background. See how I just did there? And then you can proceed to go ahead and add your mask in here. And it looks like, you know what? I've got an issue here. Look at this. Um, it's not including this portion of, of the butterfly wing in my mask. So what do I do? Oh my gosh, I have to fix that. So let's go ahead and zoom in and holding down the space bar, you can pan around and I'm going to use the same thing, the pencil, just like we did on the last one. But instead this time, whoops, I'm going to make sure that my black swatch is in the fill area. So I'm going to uh, uh, flip it using the little arrows here. So my black swatch is here and it looks like my um, pencil is a little bit big so I'm going to size that down just slightly here like this. Okay. Alright. And this time, you see what I'm doing? I'm painting in some quick mask in here. Okay, so I paint in that. Now if I turn off the quick mask, look at, and let's size this down slightly so you can sort of see this. Now, look what's happened. It's now including this area in my mask. So if you go to click quick mask, you can see how I fix that using the pencil over here. Okay, all right. So now that we've unlocked our background, we can hit delete and command D to deselect. Command A to select the entire file so that we can then in turn move this butterfly over into our composite. So here we are starting to, and it's looking pretty decent actually without even putting that expand on. So it didn't really bring, this one didn't have a problem with bringing a row of pixels and I got my butterfly antennas. Okay, all right. So, uh, that's a quick and down and dirty demonstration on how to get started on compositing your files that you search out on the internet. Okay, and keep in mind, you know, the, the things that are really important to keep in mind is the constraint proportions holding down the shift key while you reduce um, images. Keep in mind you should never enlarge images in Photoshop. You should only reduce them because you'll lose quality if you try to enlarge an image. And um, always remember to try and work uh, with the same resolution across all your files that you're trying to composite. So you want to start a master file and make it the proper resolution and then try and adjust all other images that go into the master file to that particular resolution. Okay, so this concludes week three's lecture, and if you have any questions, you can post those in the uh, problems and solutions, and uh, again, happy photoshopping. Until next time.